The Uncanny Valley was a term coined by the Japanese roboticist Masahiro Mori in the 1970s. Mori's theory was that as robots become more and more like us in a physical sense, we react positively to them until it reaches a point where they are too similar. A sense of unease pervades. Many people believe this is an evolutionary trait that calls back to a survival instinct of distrust and fear. And that is precisely where the uncanny valley lies. Humans have developed a natural aversion to creations that replicate the human form. This often unconscious bias is thought to come from how we instinctively recognize the subtle movements of our fellow beings. The gait of our walks, the gradual micro-movements of facial expressions, and the myriad of emotions conveyed through our eyes. Tech companies today are ever more getting inspired by and are trying to recreate the natural world. We can now store data on DNA. Soft body muscle-like robotics are being developed. Human thought and interaction is being replicated with the likes of ChatGPT. And some companies are even trying to reproduce human-looking robots. However, the Uncanny Valley represents just one of the major hurdles to overcome when developing this biological tech. The question really isn't, are we trying to make androids? It's, how soon will we have them? Building robots in human form that understand instructions and are able to work in a wide range of human-focused environments is most likely going to be a good thing. They could enable the replacement of cheap, exploitative manual labour, opening up higher-paid specialist jobs for humans. They may also allow industrialization to reappear in the West, having manufacture close to the target market, creating more jobs within these countries and cutting down on emissions from shipping mileage. Cleaning services, park upkeep, farming and manufacturing may one day all be managed mostly by robots. However, humanoid robots are not there yet. While some companies like Ubitech have teamed up with Zika to implement swarm robots in their car factories, these appear slow and seem expensive relative to human labour for the same work. These robots are impeded with everything from their heavy bodies and the large battery packs they have to carry, to the hard drive space and cloud connection speeds to process the massive amounts of incoming information. Getting to the stage where it's viable to fully replace humans in these workspaces is going to take a lot more innovation. And that innovation seems to be coming from the natural world. As the saying goes, you don't get a second chance to make a good first impression. That's why one area that looks to become the most controversial and difficult to crack is the aesthetics element. While this is arguably one of the most difficult and more niche elements commercially of robotic design, it's still an area companies are looking to crack. At the 2025 CES show, the robotics company Realbotics unveiled Aria and Melody, life-size and ultra-real AI-powered robots. They are the latest in a line of products from Realbotics as the company seeks to create robots and AI that are indistinguishable from humans in appearance and social interaction for the betterment of humankind. Realbotics' mission is to create uh, highly human-like robots, and we believe that the more human-like uh, we can do uh, in terms of building a robot, the more natural interacting with it will become. For us, uh, anyway, it's the conversational aspect and the ability of our robots to express emotion uh, that will bring those interactions to a more social level. The latest innovations include eye movement that can track people around the room, with cameras embedded in the eyes, the computer vision also allows multimodal interaction. The open source technology they use easily integrates with existing AI providers, such as ChatGPT, to bring physical form to the disembodied voices we have grown accustomed to for quite a while now. We have uh, 16 motors from the neck up. Um, we've spent the most time developing the heads of the robots, uh, trying to stay away from the uncanny valley uh, I believe that a, a lot of uh, people who build human-like robots go too far with the expressions and they're unnatural and, you know, not human necessarily. Um, most people have very little change sometimes in their face um, unless they're making an extreme expression. Uh, and so I, I try to keep within that realm of reality 
and we have all those motors doing that. Micro expressions. More than anything, it's just studying uh, humans and absorbing what feels natural and what doesn't. Interestingly, Realbotics has also stated that their robots have independently different personalities. At the moment, Realbotics are targeting these towards hospitality, or as companion robots. Currently, with the main purpose clearing targeting a more personal, emotional connection than may be possible with faceless metallic robots. Uh, a brand could buy a robot and bring it to their exhibition like this and bring a crowd to their booth, draw them in, you know, get them to recognize the brand and engage them in a conversation and the robot would know everything there is to know about your product and your company. A few other companies are targeting this market, but Realbotics remains unique with this realistic aesthetic. Most others fall into a category that we're coining as post-Furby. These are cute, children-oriented companion robots targeted for play or learning use cases. These include the likes of LG's Storyteller and TCL's Amy. They fit the niche promised by the Furby 20 plus years ago. But through LLMs and AI, we'll be able to interact more smartly with children while creating an emotional connection. However, an internet-connected smart robot with integrated cameras obviously raises some major safety concerns, especially when targeted at children. Encouraging children to create an emotional connection with a computer is also questionable ethically. Adult targeting may be a smarter move in the long run. An area that is genuinely showing some promise is soft robotics. Many companies are putting a considerable amount of research into this area developing a more muscle-like solution to movement over hydraulic actuators and rigid metallic components. These have a wide range of applications, from mediating safety concerns when robots are working directly with humans, to being able to pick up delicate objects, like glass beakers, without complex pressure-sensitive sensors. Festo is one of the leading companies developing in this space. They currently have a few variations on soft arms for different use cases including the Bionic soft arm and the Bionic motion robot. Both work off pneumatics, with the former featuring more skeletal structure and the latter being almost completely made from fully flexible, muscle-like materials. It is stated to be a lightweight alternative to robotic arms with a payload of 3 kilograms. The pneumatic technology operates by inflating bellows to articulate the arm in the needed direction. These arms also feature different hand attachments, the two most interesting being the tentacle gripper and the bionic soft hand. The tentacle gripper is a tentacle-like appendage that has suckers to grip delicate objects safely and delicately. The bionic soft hand is a full replica of a human hand, designed to work as a human hand would, providing gripping and turning solutions and operating objects designed for humans. Pushing buttons and even typing may also be a consideration for this type of tech. Both attachments work using the same pneumatic technology as the arms. Applications for delicate healthcare activities and surgeries are being made possible with incredible dexterity that could never be achieved through hard metallic equivalents. Taking this soft robotics idea further, Poland-based clone robotics have recently shown off the development of their protoclone robots. Actually being marketed as an android, these robots are looking to use muscular, central nervous and skeletal systems similar and directly inspired by that of a human. One of their videos went viral recently showing their protoclone dangling from the ceiling, twitching its legs. Stepping into the uncanny valley, with its semi-transparent skin and prominent skeletal structure, it's easy to see why this bondage-esque horror movie looking video caught so much attention possibly for the wrong reasons. Despite the claim, these robots don't seem like they are close to the stage where they will be able to get up and walk around, like some other systems can already do. However, their technology still looks impressive, particularly with some of their videos showing off dexterous hand movement. The company claims they are able to achieve precise human-like movements thanks to an artificial muscle-like technology called myofiber. This in combination with a skeletal, nervous and vascular system enables movement. The technology appears to operate through a sophisticated hydraulic system. 
A 500 watt electric pump, as compact as the human heart, is able to pump liquid at a 40 SLPM volumetric flow rate and 100 PSI rating, allowing it to supply hydraulic pressure to the entire muscular system. This soft robotics industry is expected to reach a market value of over $14 billion by 2033, so there appears to be a growing interest in it. One of the more science fiction elements of this merger between the natural world and robotics is the research that is going on in printing data onto DNA. Powering the age of robotics and humanoid creations requires gargantuan amounts of information and memory, which is currently split between on-device and cloud-based systems. Being able to store all the needed information in a very compact and lightweight manner could allow for increased processing speed as well as less power usage. DNA appears to be a medium that is able to achieve this. DNA storage technology is prominently being looked into by Microsoft in collaboration with the Molecular Information Systems Lab, MISL, at the University of Washington. DNA data storage leverages the molecular structure found in genetics to encode and store vast amounts of digital information. It's thought that just one gram of DNA could theoretically store 215 petabytes, that's 215 million gigabytes of data. For a little perspective, that would mean all the world's data could be held on something no bigger than a sugar cube. This works by converting digital data into DNA code. The binary of zeros and ones is translated onto the four bases of A, T, C and G. A machine then synthesizes DNA strands and embeds the data inside. The DNA can then be stored in liquid form in vials or encapsulated glass beads, and when required, the data can be retrieved by applying a read master mix chemical, which prepares the DNA to be readable and can be decoded back into ones and zeros. Although there is an incredible opportunity for DNA data storage, progress has been slow for three main reasons. It is prohibitively expensive, Current costs are at a staggering $800 million per terabyte of data stored. Writing and reading the data using DNA is a process that takes hours and days, not the seconds we're accustomed to with hard drives, so commercial or consumer use is still many years away. And being a biological product, with such specific conditions needed for storage, the degradation risks remain extremely high. For even more ambitious and advanced applications of Android-esque technology, we need to look towards the holy grail of artificial intelligence, the race towards AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence. This would essentially be the recreation of a human brain, allowing machines to learn and perform a wide range of tasks as or better than a human would. At the moment, AI relies on a lot of trickery to give the perception of intelligence or human ability. This is why initial image generation had issues rendering hands, or why OpenAI's Sora creates impossible or unnatural motion. The AI does not understand physics or the structures behind the imagery, it's just able to smartly recreate pictures and video from reference data. This field of AGI is so bound by moral and technological barriers that it is proving to be a modern scientific and engineering obsession. Pushing. Each bit we can push the intelligence of these models further, there's so much more value for the time. And yes, it takes a lot of capex, the revenue goes up that too. Depending on who you believe, we could only be two or three years away from witnessing it. The OpenAI CEO Sam Altman has suggested that as early as 2028 could see the breakthrough. Two important factors make others rather more skeptical. For one, the sheer scale and complexity of human intelligence and cognitive ability requires reasoning, adaptation to almost infinite circumstances, and constant evolutionary learning, all of which is carried out by the brain millions of times at every second of the day. Jan Lecun, an AI pioneer, has even suggested that today's AI systems lack the nuanced ability and understanding of simple biological entities, and he says they couldn't even match the intelligence of a cat. While generative AI has proved successful and impressive over recent years, it's still clear that the tasks it performs are well within the guide rails, boundaries and predefined parameters that it's given. The large language models, such as ChatGPT, 
that we are all now so used to seeing and using are simply built on information that came before it, with no independent objectives other than what they have been set. Perhaps most importantly, the amount of energy and power required to match the human brain would be astounding. For context, one of the world's most powerful supercomputers, El Capitan, operates at exa-level scales of computing, requiring a staggering 40 megawatts of power, enough to run the energy of a small city. As a result of the power of El Capitan, we'll be able to ask questions and answer them with more detail, we'll answer them faster, and we'll be able to solve more problems. The humble human brain reaches exa-levels every second with 2 million times less power, using only 20 watts. Importantly, the vast majority of these undoubtedly brilliant technological advancements are being conducted in silos. And that is exactly where multimodal AI will become essential if anything we create can truly become like the androids of fiction. What can you tell me about this sculpture? The sculpture you're seeing is called My World and Your World by Eva Rothschild, located in Lewis Cubitt Park in London. Multimodal AI refers to machines that can process, understand, align and generate information across multiple types of data or modalities. Computer vision, large language models or LLMs and image generation all typically work within their own silos. An example of current multimodal tech is something like the Ray-Ban and Meta Smart Glasses collaboration in which you are able to ask questions about the object you are looking at. The cameras in the glasses have computer vision capabilities, which are able to interface with an LLM, enabling the assistant to audibly talk to you and answer the question accurately. However, this is still a long way from AGI, and there doesn't appear to be any major progression towards it currently, at least not publicly. Power infrastructure advancements may be needed to even power it at the moment. For the time being at least, Humanoid robotics technology isn't quite ready for the mainstream, human-replacing use cases as demanded by its form. The slowdown in productivity, along with the tech costing many times the yearly wage of a human worker, especially in manufacturing powerhouses like China and India, make it seem not viable for the time being. Even the current Tesla Optimus robot, that is stated to run at around $30,000, will be unlikely to perform anywhere near as efficiently as a human worker and may prove to be a minefield of maintenance. However, we are starting to see robots used in niche cases. Dog-like robots have already made it to market, being used to patrol gas facilities for leaks, for example, or carrying heavy equipment over rough terrain. The idea of your personal robot's housekeeper, however, seems further down the road. While there is definitely an appetite amongst tech companies to work towards the creation of true androids, it may be that the barriers, and indeed the requirements for them, will limit progress. On the other hand, the limitations of traditional materials used for robotics may also start to stagnate the development of this tech, driving more money into alternative innovations. Either way, the cost for android capability will be significantly more, and there are yet to be any clear-cut scenarios for where they can actually add value. Adopting a more biological way of thinking for tech is proving to be a fruitful pursuit though, as the DNA data projects and soft body robotics are beginning to prove. Perhaps then it's further down these roads that we will approach a more unified future for man and machines. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.